Hello everyone. I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to let you know that I have posted your midterm exam grades as well as your feedback and I wanted to take just a minute to go over the exam regarding some issues that I saw. So let's take a look at it. For the first part, you, your answer must have consisted of three body paragraphs, which I didn't really see any problems uh, with. Most of you did that. Your answer needed to include a thesis statement that answers the essay question. And what I mean by that is your answer needed to be about one or two sentences, and it basically answered the question while summarizing the main points that you gave. And most of you did okay with this. Uh, There's a few few people that uh, needed a little bit work, a little bit of work, but these statements are not always easy to write, so uh, don't be discouraged by that. Then you were to provide supporting evidence, and you were to get that evidence from your course material. That included your lectures, your source analysis assignments, or any assignments that I gave that included sources. It could have included the book, but it was not supposed to include any outside sources. I was even fine if you included uh, sources from the book, like some of the you know, links to primary sources. Uh, that was okay. And you were to provide at least five separate primary sources, meaning not to use the same source twice. And most of you did this for the, for the most part, uh, but that was, that was part of what you needed uh, to provide. And regardless of which sources I'm talking about, whether it was the five required or uh, any of the other sources that you provided, whether it was a lecture or the textbook, you needed to cite it. So anytime you provided any information that didn't come from your own brain, you needed to cite it. So if you got the information from a lecture, you need to cite the lecture. If you got the information from a source analysis assignment, then you needed to cite that. So regardless of the type of source you provided, you needed to cite it. And you were to cite both in text and on the Works Cited page. So you needed to use MLA style for that. I did provide you a link to that. And I also provided you some specific information regarding the Puritan Life question and the uh, American Revolution question. So I want to go over a couple, or actually all three of the, the questions and what I was expecting. The first question said, describe the Chesapeake colonies. And in your answer, be sure to include their economic, including labor, political, and social systems. Again, what I meant by economic was, you know, what kind of system did they have? You know, what were the crops, uh, for example? Also, their labor system. You know, at first they had indentured servitude, then they had slavery, or they actually had them both at the same time. And I wanted you to include both of those types of labor as well as when and why the transition happened. So in other words, there was a transition from indentured servitude to slavery, and I wanted you to talk about that transition. You were also to include their political system, and what I mean by political, again, as I have stated before, was either the law or the government. Uh, some of you talked about their assemblies, that was fine. You could have talked about uh, slave codes uh, in this particular question. And as far as social systems, that could have been, you know, it was pretty broad. You could have talked about 
uh, their religion. You could have talked about their uh, relationships between each other. You know, Bacon's Rebellion was would have been a good example. And again, I did say explain their, their religion, so you can do that as part of the social system as well, or you could have done it separately. And then the relationship with Native Americans, you needed to mention a specific conflict because it wasn't all harmony. So you needed to mention a specific uh, conflict with uh, respect to that relationship. Okay, so the, the New England colony question. Again, I needed you to describe their economic, including their labor system, their political system, and their social systems. Their economic system was primarily uh, agriculture and fishing, and their labor system was family labor. And I included a chart in the lecture, so you should have been able to look at that and then go back and listen to the lecture. And that should have given you an indication of what I was asking for there. Uh, the political system, again, you know, if you included their assembly or you know, kind of how their system was set up, separation of uh, religion and, and, and civil procedures, that was okay too. Social systems, you could have talked about uh, their families, uh, their personal relationships with, within, e within the families, between the parents and the children, uh, such as this idea of obedience uh, to their children. And basically everything from that Puritan life uh, source analysis uh, would have should have been included here. And religion, if you didn't talk about religion, I deducted a lot because religion was the key important aspect uh, of the Puritan society or the Mass Bay colony. So religion played a big role. And also with respect to the relationship with Native Americans. We should have talked about a specific conflict that we discussed in the lecture. And the third question, the American Revolution. Uh, you, I needed you to include social, economic, and political, political aspects. Uh, to get most of that, you needed to really just go back to the lecture. Uh, when I'm talking about uh, social, uh, you, know, you could have included the roles of women and African Americans in the Revolutionary War. That's just one example uh, of the social aspect of the American Revolution. You could have talked about the idea of the social contract and John Locke. Economic, you could have talked about you know the taxes that were, were being uh, placed on them and you know how they reacted to that. And many of you did uh, do that. And there was also an end to the mercantilist system. And many of you talked about that as well, and that was fine. In political aspects. Uh, you could have talked about, you know, common sense. Uh, you could have talked about, you know, the Declaration of Independence, uh, all important parts of the American Revolution. And then you needed to include a discussion about the People's Revolution. And I've already told you the definition of that, which was the internal struggle. You'll remember that was where each group were looking for their own uh, equality. They, you know, individual groups had an agenda that they wanted from the revolution. Well, they want change. Well, they want change for themselves as well. They want change, you know, as a nation, but and against Britain. But they also wanted change uh, for themselves. They wanted something out of the revolution, which included women, Native Americans. Uh, African Americans, the aristocrats who didn't want change, and the middling class. So that's what I was looking for. Now with respect to the sources, for the first question you could have used five sources even the textbook. So if you actually wanted to talk about the slave codes, you could have used those as examples of uh, slave codes. They were, there was a number of, of laws on that website. You could have also used the uh, contracts uh, the, for the indentured servants uh, as examples. You could talk about indentured servitude and talked about 
uh, their contracts and gave some of the language uh, from one, of the, one or both of the contracts that you could have used those as sources as well. But regardless, you needed to use the lecture and you could have used the textbook, you didn't necessarily have to, but you could have as well as the uh, sources from that website. For the New England colony, you should have used the sources that uh, I provided regarding Puritan life, that particularly on this uh, social systems, personal relationships, family question. And we, I gave you uh, at least five or six of those, so you could have used those as your required sources. You didn't necessarily need to go into the textbook to try to find sources. Uh, you could have just used those sources and you would have been fine. In fact, that's what I was looking for you to do. And the last question, kind of the same as the New England question, uh, the sources you could have used from your American Revolution or People's Revolution uh, source analysis assignment. You could have used all five of those uh, sources, or, all, or at least five of those sources. And that's Again, that's kind of what I was looking for here, too. So uh, some of it, you came up with some variations of it, which, you know, if it made sense to use those sources, I counted, and the way that you use those sources, I counted as well. For example, the mob rules, um, if you use that to kind of explain uh, the grievances, uh, during the revolution, I, I, I allowed that. That's fine. The, the, the intent that I gave you of that source was for you to understand that the middling class wanted, you know, they didn't want taxes. Uh, but if you used it in the, another way, that was okay as long as it made sense. Same thing if you found some sources or some links on the textbook. Um, and if you use those in a, an appropriate way, uh, I counted that as well. And as far as photographs, I don't usually count photographs as a source unless um, you can explain how it how it's used. Uh, just a picture of somebody or a photograph of somebody or an il illustration of someone doesn't necessarily make it uh, a primary source unless the question calls for that. You know, for example, the illustration of, of uh, the alternative uh, one where it talks about the uh, in the Puritan, or I'm sorry, in the American Revolution, that one really does talk about uh, the illustration is intended as primary source, and it's intended to you know, to get you to kind of figure out, you know, who was involved in the revolution, what groups of people were involved in the revolution, and that was fine. But just an ordinary photograph of a of a founding father uh, didn't uh, didn't really count uh, unless it, you know unless the question had been about that, but it wasn't. So, so that's what uh, I was looking for in in the essay. And I want to make sure that you ask questions about your feedback or if you need clarification please let me know because I want to make sure that you correct uh, those mistakes if you made any. Uh, some of you made you know more than others but that's okay. Uh, you know it, it's a process. So you know I wanted you to be able to correct those mistakes uh, for your essay which will be worth a hundred points coming up in the in a few weeks. So if you need to have a conference with me, let me know. We can do a Zoom conference or or a chat or, or something like that. If you if you want to go over it in more detail, or you can just simply send me an, you know multiple emails. It, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. And also, I want to mention that I have posted a extra credit assignment opportunity for um, for you guys if, if you'd like to do it. It is optional and it the reason I, I gave this to you is for a couple of reasons. One um, is so you can correct your mistakes and have me look at it again. That's that's one reason. And two, it gives you opportunity for extra points. So if you didn't do as well as you would have liked, uh, you know, there's some opportunity to kind of make that up and, and maybe get some additional feedback while you're at it. And understand, I, d I won't change the grade of the essay, but it will be added on at the end 
of the semester. So if you want to think about it as, you know, I got a 40 on my essay and I got 15 points, so that gives me, you know, that, you know I'm, I made up for the points I lost. You can, but you can also, you know, those points could also supplement, you know, points that you lost on a source analysis or, any, or you know, basically anywhere. So, so make sure you take a look at the extra credit as well. And I have you correcting five mistakes, but I've explained that in the extra credit prompt. But if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Okay, that's all for today.